Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day here where I live. It's sunny, but very windy. So um, I look forward to starting in 1 John chapter 3 today. And I'm going to see, I may do the whole chapter today depending on the time frame of it because it's not that long of a chapter. So I will get right into it. <clears throat> it says, chapter 3, verse 1. See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. Dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure, just as he is pure. So, stopping there. So basically, when people say uh, the term, oh, we're a child of God. In reality, no one is a child of God unless you have accepted Jesus Christ. Every person is God's creation, but he actually refers to only believers as children of God, people whom he has called out of darkness into his light. Everyone else is his creation, you know, they're his children in a sense that he created them, but it's a special thing to be called a child of God, as we are also called many other names that he has given us. So I think about that when I hear people, unbelievers say we're all children of God. Well, we're not. We're only children of God if we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior and he brings us into the family of God. So I want to get that point out. Secondly, it says, um, we don't know what we will be like, but we know that we will be like him when he appears. So we don't know exactly the type of body that we will take on. Um, obviously, it's a physical body because Christ was resurrected and was in a physical body, yet he still had the wounds that he showed his disciples, but he was glorified and he would appear instantly in a room. So there are some clues to what we'll be like, but we know that there will be no pain, there will be no more death, there will be, all the formal things will be passed away, we will have a glorified body. So that's something we can really look forward to. As a person with an autoimmune disease who has chronic pain, it's something that I really look forward to. My sister recently had passed on in October, and she also had a lot of chronic ailments and was in pain all the time. And I take comfort in knowing that my sister is uh, with Christ now. She loved the Lord and she is no longer suffering in that pain. And that gives me great comfort. So I will continue on. It says number four, in verse 4, Everyone who sins is breaking God's law. For all sin is contrary to the law of God. <clears throat> and you know that Jesus came to take away our sins, and there is no sin in him. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin. But anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. So this is not to say that we'll never sin, because there's many other portions of the Bible that talks of us about us sinning as Christians. In fact, Paul had that fight and he says, I, I do what I want to do. I don't do. And what I you know do, I don't want to do. So there's a struggle with us until we are made new again when Jesus Christ comes back or when we pass on into heaven. We are fully um, sanctified at that point. But right now we're going through a sanctification process. So what this is talking about is not staying in sin. So there should be an obvious, there should be a change. So Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. So when we accept Christ, he comes into our life. He cleanses us from all sin. He counts us as righteous because he is righteous and he has taken our 
uh, penalty for our sin and we are positionally citizens of heaven but we will still struggle with sin and temptation that's why the bible talks about temptation until we die um, satan will test us or tempt us uh, god will test us and see how strong our faith is so there will be struggles this is talking about staying in our sin and never changing because there's people that we may have heard of or known that say i'm saved but they never change at all there is no change they may never talk about the lord they may never read their bible it was like they made a decision but that was it and there's no proof and so there absolutely needs to be a change showing that we are repenting of our sins and we're turning from it and then it goes on to say dear children don't let anyone deceive you about this when people do what is right it shows that they are righteous even as christ is righteous but when people keep on sinning it shows that they belong to the devil who has been sinning since the beginning but the son of god came to destroy the works of the devil those who have been born into god's family do not make a practice of sinning because god's life is in them his holy spirit so they can't keep on sinning because they're children of god so now we can tell who are children of god and who are children of the devil anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to god so that is a, you know pretty very succinct kind of capitalizing on what i just kind of said that don't let anyone deceive you you know when people do what's right when they're changing when they're giving up their sins when they're recognizing there's areas that need to be handled and they're repenting and they're asking god for his strength it's showing that they are moving in the direction of understanding what is sin because some people may sin and not even know it and then after they become saved they read the bible and they oh i was sinning and then you know it may be a small sin or whatever but they um should immediately correct it and of course sometimes some things just take time and it's been such a maybe a chronic sin in our life that it's going to take time to break that and a practice in repenting and practice in obedience but there is a difference you definitely see a difference people who are completely the same never change never anything about god those people are obviously not saved and they are with the devil or on the devil's side they're in the kingdom of darkness okay um and then lastly it says this is a message you have heard from the beginning we should love one another we must not be like cain who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother and why did he kill him because cain had been doing what was evil and his brother had been doing what was righteous so don't be surprised your brothers and sisters if the world hates you and i'm going to stop there um today and that was ending in verse 13. so basically don't expect the world to like you love you approve of you because when you are righteous you know they don't like that because it reminds them of them so remember we're only righteous because of what jesus christ has done but our actions should start lining up with that positional righteousness from jesus christ and so it reminds people that there's an issue with them and they don't like it um, they didn't like Jesus when he came, you know, it, it, they, there was many that didn't like him because it reminded them that, oh, I have to repent. I have to change. I have to give up things. And he warned them there was a cost in following him. And so people aren't going to be like, to, like, you know, like to be reminded of that. In fact, it talks about, you know, Jesus said he came to not bring peace, but division because you know he's a prince of peace and of course he brought the message of peace but in the family there's you know a husband that can't stand that the fact that the wife might have become saved parents you know get enraged if a child becomes saved so there's can be division that he talks about in the bible in the family where a father is against 
you know, a wife or a mother against the children or so on, so on. He gives various examples in the Bible about that because there is a cost. Think about the people who were from the Muslim tradition and they came to know Christ and they were completely banished from their family, outcast, some of them killed, and that's what he's talking about. There is a cost to following Christ. So consider that and make it a real um, dedication to him. Don't take it lightly. Make it a real consideration and count the cost because you want to be found to be a true believer in Jesus Christ. So if you have not done that today um, and you are not sure where you stand with God, today is the day of salvation. Ask Christ to come into your life and to cleanse you and save you and repent of your sins. Ask him for forgiveness of the sins that you can remember and all the sins that you can't. And he will come into your life and then begin reading the Bible and finding a quality church home and quality Bible teachers to help you in your walk. I pray that everyone has a good day and I will see you tomorrow with the end of that chapter. God bless.